Hello students, today I would like to start a new chapter, moving charges and magnetism. Moving charges and magnetism, this is the new chapter that I would like to start from today. As you know that when a compass needle is kept near a bar like that, then it will be different. Similarly, if this compass needle is kept near a current carrying wire, then the flexion is also seen in the compass needle. So, I would like to tell you what is the difference between these two experiments. Now, here it is bar magnet. So, due to this bar magnet, there is a deflection in compass medium. And here it is a wire and current is flowing through it. Then, due to this current carrying wire, there is a deflection in this compass medium. Now, why this compass needle feels deflection? Because there is a field around this bar magnet, and due to the effect of that field, there is a deflection in the compass needle. Similarly, here it is a current carrying wire, so there is a magnetic field around this wire, and due to that magnetic field, it feels deflection. Now here, if we make this current zero, then what happens? The deflection is compass needle disappears like this. So it is clear that when current is flowing through this wire, then there will be magnetic field around it, and due to that magnetic field, there will be a deflection in the compass needle. Now suppose. If we change the direction of current flowing in this wire, then the direction of deflection of this compass medium also changes. So we can say that the magnetic field, the direction of magnetic field arises around this wire also changes. So in this way, it depends on the direction of flow of current in this wire. So here, since current is flowing in this wire, and this current is generated by the flow of electron. So we can say that when electron flows in the wire, or charged particle flows in the wire, then there is a magnetic field around this wire, and due to that magnetic field, this compass needle feels deflection. So that's why the name of this chapter is moving charges and magnetism. This means if any charge particle Q in motion, in motion, then there will be a magnetic field around it. But if any charge Q is not in motion, it is in rest, then there will be no magnetic field. But you can say that there is magnetic field. So, electric field E is created around this rest charge, but if this charge is motion, then there will be two field, electric field as well as magnetic field. So, it is clear that when we stop the flowing current through this wire, then there will be no deflection in the compass needle. So, it results that there is no magnetic field around this wire. So, this magnetic field arises only when charge moves, but if the charge is necessary, then there is only electric field, not magnetic field. So, the connection of this topic to this experiment is that when any charge particle comes in motion, then magnetic field creates around it, otherwise, magnetic field does not create when the charge is in rest. Now here, if 
this is a void and current is flowing then there will be magnetic field around it and when wire is straight and current is flowing through it then from the previous classes you came to know that the C part magnetic field will be I circle so this will be the circular shape of magnetic field this means magnetic field are always making closed cut they are making like a closed cut and you are familiar with this concept that magnetic field always arises from north pole and comes to south pole then inside the magnet they makes a closed cut so this is the property of magnetic field now here this this is a current carrying wire and there is a magnetic field around it this is also the statement of oersted o e r s t e d oersted is the name of scientist who observed that when current flows through a wire then there is a magnetic field around it and experimentally it is clear when the compass needle is kept near this wire then it feels deflection so this is the proof that when current flows through the wire there will be a magnetic field it is the statement of course now what if you want to find at any point p what is the intensity of this magnetic field then according to the statement of course there is no formula to find out intensity of magnetic field at this point p so for this purpose by sauer law by sauer's law here by sauer's law has given this is by sauer's name of the scientist according to this concept what will be the magnetic field intensity by any point p in the magnetic field around the current carrying wire can be computed so the formula which is given by bio sievers is known as bio sievers formula to find out the magnetic field at any point now one thing is clear here if you want to find the magnetic field intensity at the point p then according to the bio sievers law you do not take the whole length of the wire but you will take a very finitely small element of this wire so this is a small element that is supposed to be here infinitely small element means the distance from this point to this point is too small to experience as a point infinitely small length means a point so due to this point what will be magnetic field at the point p is given by the formula vector d b is equal to mu na upon cos phi i vector d l cross vector r divided by r q now here let us consider this is a current carrying wire and here this is infinitely this one element so it is also known as current element and here is a point p this is the point p at this point p you want to calculate magnetic field intensity so now join this line from here let us suppose this is vector r so we can say that this is the position vector of point p from this infinitely small current element now let us suppose it makes angle theta it makes angle theta then vector db is equal to mu naught upon rho pi i vector dl cross vector r divided by r q what is vector dl cross vector r 
we know that vector a cross vector b is equal to a b sin theta n by here vector a cross vector b is equal to this much apply this formula we find db is equal to mu naught upon four pi i d n r sin theta divided by r q so this formula concludes mu naught upon four pi i d n sin theta divided by r square so this is the vector form of biosever slab and you can say this is the scalar form of biosever slab generally this formula is used to calculate magnetic field tendency at the point p now try to understand again what is biosever slab biosever the master scientist he has given a formula to find out magnetic field intensity at any point in magnetic field let us suppose this is a current carrying wire and this is current in it it is infinitely small so it is considered as a point as a point now suppose this is the point p whose position vector from this current element is vector r and this point i have this point you want to calculate magnetic field intensity let us suppose this is vector dl and this is vector r and this angle to theta is between vector dl and vector r so this formula is here vector d is equal to this much now according to this formula vector a cross vector d is equal to a sin theta l by apply this formula here we take mu naught upon rho pi i dl r sin theta divided by r q so this will be mu naught upon rho pi i dl sin theta by r square r and r q cancel out you have r square now this is the formula this is the formula used to calculate magnetic field at the point p due to current element due to current element but if you want to find out magnetic field at the point p due to the whole wire then we have to integrate on both sides so it will be b integral of mu naught upon rho pi i dl sin theta by r square so this is all about biosecurity next application of biosecurity application of biosecurity application look here. what is application of biosecurity since it is the formula to find out magnetic field at any point therefore the first to derive magnetic field b at a point due to current carrying wire of finite length to derive magnetic field i have a point due to current carrying wire of finite length this is the now look here let us suppose this is the wire ab the length of this wire is finite this means the wire is a measuring wire current i is flowing through this wire ab so it is called current carrying wire let us suppose here is a point p on which we want to calculate magnetic field intensity let us suppose 
this point P is I a distance x from the y. Now to apply Biosever's law, we have to consider a very infinitely small element. Let us suppose this Rs is a correct element of this wire Rs. We want to find out magnetic field at the point P due to this current carrying element. Now here, let us suppose this is position vector R and this element Rs makes angle D5 at the point P. Let us suppose this vector Rs, it is the position vector at point P from this current element Rs. Let us suppose its distance is dm. From R to S it is dm. And this makes angle, suppose that here this is angle theta, then this will be pi minus theta. If this angle is theta, then this angle will be pi minus theta. Now we draw a perpendicular from the point R on line SP. Let us suppose this is M. It is perpendicular. Now, since the length of this wire AV is finite, so we have to see what is the angle made by the point A at the point P and also by the point B at the point P. Join it P to A. So this angle is I1 suppose and join B to P. Let us suppose this angle is I1. Angle O P A is I1 and angle O P B is I1. This I1 is tending in negative direction and I2 is tending in positive direction. So at the point P by by Sewer's law magnetic field DB magnetic field DB at the point P due to this current element RS current element RS DB is equal to mu naught upon 4 pi I DL sin theta divided by R square. Now here DL sin theta. How do you use this DL sin theta? Look here. In triangle RMS RMS. This is right angle. Now from here we calculate sin pi minus theta. Sin pi minus theta. Perpendicular on hypotenuse that is I upon Is. Implies that sin theta is equal to I upon Is. Is is dl. So this implies that I is equal to dl sin theta. Now again in So here we take sin d5, sin d5, this is the angle that is made here, d5, this R P S. this is the angle made by this small element at the point P, sin d5, this is equal to R M upon R P. So this is equal to R upon R B is small here.
we take its magnitude. Therefore, R n is equal to R sin d phi. This is written as R d phi because this angle is very small. For the smallest angle, R sin d phi will be equal to d phi. Now, comparing these two parts, we have d l sin theta is equal to R d phi. R n is equal to d l sin theta. And here R n is equal to R d phi. Therefore, this will be d l sin theta is equal to R d phi. Now, from this formula, we may remove it. So this becomes d d is equal to mu naught upon 4 pi i in place of d l sin theta. We write R d phi divided by R square. So finally, we come to this point, mu naught upon 4 pi r d phi by sorry, i d phi by r. Now here, r is the position vector of this small element to the point p, but we need ob because ob is the distance of this point from this finite wire pb. So we have to convert R in terms of x. So in triangle R O P, look here. In triangle R O P, it is also like a triangle. Now we take cos phi. This suppose angle phi here. So cos phi is equal to this upon Based upon hypotenuse. So implies that R is equal to x divided by cos phi. Now, with the help of this concept, we find dv is equal to mu naught upon 4 pi here i d phi upon x by cos phi. So this will be mu naught upon 4 pi i cos phi d phi upon x. Therefore, since our target is to find out my negative field at the point P due to the whole wire, so for this purpose we have to integrate on both sides. So, this will be b is equal to integral of minus phi 1 to phi 2. This is lower limit and this is upper limit. Lower limit is minus phi 1, upper limit is phi 2. Phi 2 is minus phi 1 because it is trending in negative direction and it is trending in positive direction. So, this will be minus phi 1 to phi 2. Mu naught upon 4 pi i cos phi d phi divided by x. For some constants here, mu naught upon 4 pi it is constant, i constant, x constant, so integral of minus phi 1 to phi 2 cos phi d phi. This becomes mu naught upon 4 pi i by x. What is the integral of cos phi? It will be sin phi minus phi 1 to phi 2. So this becomes mu naught upon 4 pi i by x. After solving this, we have sin phi minus sin minus phi 1. So this will be mu naught upon 4 pi i by x sin phi 1 plus sin phi 2. So d is equal to this much. This is the formula. To calculate magnetic field at point P due to the finite point.
Now here, what is mu naught upon 4 pi? Here, mu naught upon 4 pi it is a constant that is 10 power minus 7 newton per ampere square. This is the value of mu naught. Therefore, mu naught is equal to 4 pi into 10 power minus 7 newton per ampere square. This mu zero is called permeability of free space. And you can see by two. It is known as permeability of free space or by two. Now next point. Look here for infinite void. For infinite void, we have not to derive any next formula for infinite void of current wire. But here for finite void, v is equal to mu naught upon 4 pi i by x into sin phi 1 plus sin phi 2 for finite length. Now, if we extend this y in minus infinity and here 2 plus infinity, then it will be called this y is converted in finite length of y. If this point is progressing in minus infinity and this point is progressing in plus infinity, then there will be increment in both the angles. This angle i1 also increases and this phi2 also increases. So this phi1 increases in this direction and phi2 increases in this direction. So finally it becomes like this way here. So what will be this angle? 90 degree. And what will be this angle? 90 degree. Try to understand again. If you want to extend this wire AB in both the direction for infinite length, then it will go into minus infinity and that will go up to plus infinity. So if these two ends of this wire are increasing, then this angle phi one and this angle phi two also increases. So the maximum value of phi one and phi two in the case when this wire AB is converted in infinite length becomes phi 1 and phi 2 that will be 90 degree. From here to here it will be 90. From here to here it will be 90. So for infinite length for infinite length in A tends to minus infinity and in B tends to plus infinity then pi 1 and pi 2 is equal to pi by 2 therefore b is equal to mu naught upon 4 pi i by x into sin pi by 2 plus sin pi by 2 so This becomes mu naught upon 4 pi i upon x into 1 plus 1. So that is 2. Mu naught upon 4 pi i by x into 2. On cancellation, mu naught upon 2 pi i by x. V is equal to this much. R it will be written as V is equal to 2 into 10 power minus 7 i by x. Next.
Now here, this pyro saver plug and coulombs for the charges are somewhat resemble to each other. For pyro saver plug, B is equal to mu naught upon 4 pi i dl sin theta by r square and coulombs of is equal to 1 by 4 by epsilon naught q1 q2 by r square. So we can say here that b proportional 1 by r square and f proportional 1 by r square. For electric field e is equal to 1 by 4 by epsilon naught q by r square. So electric field also for this this property so it is called inverse square so b proportional 1 by r square and e also proportional 1 by r square so we want to determine the relation between mu naught and epsilon mu naught permeability of free space and epsilon naught permeability of free space so what is the relation between mu zero and epsilon. Now from bio solar law we know mu naught upon 4 pi is equal to 10 power minus 7 newton per mbm square. And from Coulomb's law we know that 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught 9 into 10 power 9 newton meter square per square. So this becomes mu naught upon 4 pi divided by 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. So this becomes 10 power minus 7 newton per ampere square divided by 9 into 10 power 9 newton meter square per Coulomb square. So this becomes mu naught upon 4 pi into 4 pi epsilon naught is equal to Newton upon 9 into 10 power 16 Newton meter square per Coulomb square. 10 power minus 7 by now it will be plus. So here you can, you can cancel, we have this Coulomb goes up, Coulomb square divided by 9 into 10 power 16 ampere square into meter square. Now here Coulomb square it will be 1 since you know that i is equal to q by t therefore q is equal to i into t in place of q ampere into second. So it will be then ampere into second whole square divided by 9 into 10 power 16 ampere square into meter square. So here ampere square is cancelled out. So this becomes what? Coulomb is square to ampere into second whole square. Second is square divided by 9 into 10 power 16 meter square. Finally, it is written as 1 upon 9 into 10 power 16 meter square upon second square. Now here 4 pi 4 pi is cancelled. We have mu naught into epsilon naught is equal to 1 upon it is written as 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second whole square. So this is the speed of light. In air, the speed of light in air. So finally we can say that C is equal to 1 by under mu naught into epsilon naught. Here C is speed of light in by two R A. 
so this is the relation between mu naught and epsilon now b magnetic field b vector quantity it is vector quantity so to know its direction we have to apply two methods now first let us suppose this is a current carrying wire and here is a point b here is a point b we want to find out the direction of magnetic field at the point b due to this current carrying wire so now open your right hand like this way and put the thumb in the direction of current and this pause towards the point b then this is stretching of your pause inside r look like this so its direction will be this much it is called inward r we can say perpendicular to the plane of paper plane of paper inward inward but if this point is taken on left hand side then apply by right hand rule v2 in this case our thumb will be in the direction of current and pass towards the point p then this situation upward this will be the direction of current turning your pass in upward direction or pushing upward so it will be this this is the upward direction and this signal is for inward direction so this will be upward direction upward direction this upward direction magnetic field will be taken with positive sign and inward direction it will be taken with negative sign since it is vector quantity therefore direction of this magnetic field to know is very necessary for you and you have to apply this right and rule again try to understand this is the wire current is flowing in this direction and here is the point p you want to find out the direction of magnetic field at this point p so opening your right hand and put your thumb in the direction of current and this pause is towards this point p then curving your pause like this way so this will be inside so we can say inward and if this point p is taken on left hand side then opening your this right hand and thumb makes in the direction of current and this pass towards this point p and like this way here it is upward so its direction will be upward and its direction will be inward if you are changing the direction of current like this way in this way if this becomes the direction of current then both the situation will be reversed here it will be upward and here it will be inward so it depends on the direction of current and next if current is flowing suppose that this is a circular wire current is flowing here anti clockwise if current is flowing anti clockwise then direction of b will be upward it will be upward and if direction of current is clockwise then vector b cross it will be inward inward in this way we may determine the direction of magnetic field at any point due to the current now next application magnetic field b at the 
सेंटर ऑफ ए करें करें सर्कुलर वाई करें करें सर्कुलर वाई नाउ ये माइग्रेटिव फील्ड यू हैव टू फाइंड अप एट द सेंटर ऑफ करें करें सर्कुलर वाई नाउ सी ये दिस इज ए वाई that is converted into circular shape suppose that it is center o and its radius is r now here current is flowing in this wire in anti clockwise direction then magnetic field arises at the point o will be perpendicular to the plane of paper and upward this will be the direction putting this tester at this point o and making the plane of this dipole then this will be the perpendicular direction upward and this will be inward so noting the direction of current anti clockwise direction of magnetic field will be upward and if we make the direction of this current clockwise then direction of magnetic field will be inward now here we have to find out magnetic field due to the whole circular wire at the point o but if you want to apply wire sorts law then you have to consider a very small element let us suppose this is a very small element and its length is d from here to here it will be vector r and this is also vector d its direction will be like this way when we are making any tangent at this point then it will be in the direction now here apply bio severs law db is equal to mu naught by 4 pi i dl sin theta divided by r square this is the formula to apply find out magnetic field at the point b as i have already told you that the direction of magnetic field at the point o is perpendicular to this plane so theta will be 90 degree so putting here mu naught by four pi i d l sin pi by 2 divided by r square this formula converts finally in mu naught from 4 pi i d l by r square since this is the magnetic field due to the current in the end of infinitely small length but if you want to find out the magnetic field at the point o due to the whole circular wire then we have to integrate so integrating on both sides b is equal to integral of mu naught by 4 pi i dl by r square so take out the constant quantities mu naught by 4 pi i by r square we have integral of dl so this integral of dl is known as line integral and this line integral is just equal to the whole length of its circumference so mu naught by 4 pi i by r square this becomes 2 pi r so on consideration we have mu naught upon 2 i by r so this is the formula d is equal to mu naught by 2 i upon r now here i have already told you that this intensity of magnetic field depends on number of turns also since we have taken here only one turns and if you have taken here n turns like this way then this magnetic field becomes d is equal to mu naught by q n i by r this n is multiplied by dl because 
this magnetic field will increase up to n times to the number of turns. Now, if this formula is used for a semi circle, then this field becomes half. So, for the semi circle, let us suppose this. This is the center O and radius. Suppose R current is like this way. Then B is equal to half. This formula mu naught by mu i upon r. In this case, what will be its direction since the current is clockwise? Then its direction will be cross. This means inward to the plane of the field. 